All right. So now let's take a look at the condition of the property and what we look for. The main types of improvements or deferred maintenance that you'll be looking at when you're walking one of these facilities or looking at photos of these facilities are the condition of the doors. Do they need to be painted? Do they need to be replaced? Are there dents? The door springs. So these are heavy steel doors. If the springs break, it's almost impossible to lift it with your, with your bare hands. So these springs help quite a bit. And these are the things that the springs usually need to be replaced every five to 10 years on each door. Uh, the latches that keep the, the lockers locked, those start to rust and need to be replaced so that nobody can break them. Uh, the gutters, you know, because this is, this is real estate, you want to make sure that you're, that you're, guiding the water away from the property so that it doesn't break down the foundation or the concrete slab that it's on. Bollards. Bollards are these concrete poles that are usually at the corners of each of the buildings so that when someone's backing up, they don't accidentally run into the corner and dent it. What's the pavement condition like? Is it gravel? Does it need to have asphalt on it? Does it need to have you need to put concrete down? Um, is it overgrown with grass and weeds? Do you need to spray some herbicide to take care of that so it looks a lot nicer? And then, like I said before, if they didn't have bollards, there's probably a couple dents in the metal, either in the doors or on the sides of the building that need to be buffed out just to make them look nicer. And then what's the condition of the paint? Uh, is it weathered? Is it chipped? Do we need to repaint so that we make sure the metal doesn't rust? These are all things that we look for when we're walking through these properties. Okay, and then last but not least, let's look at how we do these value adds. So I'm gonna list off a few of the value adds that we always look for when we're buying properties. You know, first is, is there ability to increase rents? Uh, are the rents below market? You know, if, if, if we're charging say $12 a square foot per year, but all the competitors are at $18 a square foot, there's a huge opportunity for us to go and increase our revenue by 33%. And that usually doesn't cost you anything other than some postage and a couple letters to send out to the, to the customers. You can add ancillary profit centers. Uh, you can de decrease the expenses. You can increase or create an online presence if they don't have one. Remember what I said, 60% of our customers now are coming from this little guy right here. But if you can't find our self-storage facility on your phone, then we're losing so much potential revenue that's just going to our competitors. We like to transition from, from cash and checks to automatic payments. This allows us to make sure that tenants are paying on time. Um, we will usually charge some type of... Uh, premium or even give people a discount if they're willing to go to like an auto debit or put their credit card information in or an ACH payment. We'll look at what type of physical improvements we can make to the pop, you know, to the, the existing property. And then we'll look at what are the potential opportunities to expand the facility. So say you've done all the things above and you're still floating at hundred percent occupancy. That means it's time to build more storage. And then the last thing, which is kind of like a bonus, the last two items here would be to rectify your accounts receivable and to conduct auctions. And then to monopolize the market if you have the opportunity to do so. So let's go into each one of these a little bit more in depth. So let's look at rent increases in below market. In the mid to late 80s is when there was a huge boom in self-storage facilities being built just because of the cheap cost of materials, cheap cost of labor. Uh, people were starting to become more wealthy and were buying more things and they needed to places to store those things. So what you found is that a lot of these first generation drive up facilities were built during that time. Now, a lot of these owners, these, especially these mom and pop owners, they have this policy of, you know, whatever your rate was when you moved into my facility, even if it was 10, 15 years ago, that's what your rate's going to be for life because they just don't want to deal with, or maybe they just don't want to rock the boat by increasing the rent on their tenants annually. So this is an opportunity for you to come in and capture all of that value. So what we like to do is 
as soon as we buy a new facility, we'll bring all the existing cup customers up to 95% of market rates just so that we're still giving them a deal so they don't have to go anywhere else. And then any new clients that are coming in, we'll charge them 100 to 105% of market rent, especially when the competitors are over 90% occupancy. That means that there is demand that has been unmet in that market. 